How do we actually measure character? Is it something you can actually measure? Have you ever met somebody and right after the meeting, you just walk away and thinking, oh my word, what a character. Uh, and it could be somebody with a great personality or somebody that's very charismatic or vibrant or engaging. Sometimes it could be you meet somebody and you walk away and think, oh man, what a character. And that means that they might be a little bit strange or eccentric uh, or even unpleasant. What do you think people say about you, about your character? Do you, would you refer to yourself as somebody that has good character? Uh, and how do we actually measure it? See, the character that you embody says so much about you. And when you form part of a worship team or, or as a creative arts team, and you're somebody that serves alongside other people in the kingdom of God, that is something that's so important to us is that you will be and that I will be somebody with good character. But we cannot actually um, start there. Typically, if you ask somebody, how do you measure character? They will say something in the line of it's a person that has the same personality on and off stage. But uh, when we talk about that, we actually refer to it as being authentic or somebody would say that person is really there's somebody that's real. But According to who or what do we measure that? Um, I could be a real jerk. Uh, I'm authentic and what you see is what you get. Um, this is just who I am. Deal with it. But that's not necessarily to say that's who we want to be. See, when it comes to the word authentic, it actually comes from the root word author. And at first glance, if you think about author, you don't necessarily make that connection, but that's the root word. And it might seem unrelated, but it's actually not. The author of any work of art is probably the best person to go to if you want to understand and find out what the explanation of that original intent is or the specific meaning of that art piece is. Now, I'm, ne I'm not necessarily a painter. I don't necessarily understand art that well. And sometimes I really wish that I could just spend a minute or two with the actual painter or the artist or the creator of a specific art piece to just understand what were they thinking. You know, when you look at a piece of art and you, if you wonder, is this the right side up or not, you can't make out what it is. That for the moments like that, I really want to ask that person, what were you thinking? What was the intent behind it? The only person who can really answer that is the person who created that the author, the creator. See, in, in painting, in the world of painting, we have to, we've come to understand that if the work that we are viewing is not an original created by the artist himself, we refer to that as a fake or it is not authentic. Have you ever looked at somebody and very with some judgment in your heart, maybe thought, hmm, that person doesn't appear to be real. They might look like they're fake. Um, that's what it means. That's why we make that assumption. Uh, in music and in liter literature, when something is falsely presented or not aligned with the author's original concept or intent, it is no longer authentic. So how do we define authentic? Only that which is portrayed to the same specifications, the same guidelines and, and standards that the author intended is in fact authentic. Now I'm sure by now you've begun to connect the dots uh, in terms of the whole author concept and why we refer to character uh, and somebody with good character is as somebody that is authentic to something. Now it is no secret that the Bible refers to God as the author of all things, our lives included. In Genesis 1 verse 1 we read, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. He is the ultimate creator. He is the prototype for what it means to be human. His creative genius underlies our own capacity for creativity. In Genesis 1 verse 26, we read, and God said, let us make man in our image after our own likeness. He's also the author of the way. He paved the way for us to live this life as he intended it to be lived. John 14 uh, verse 6 says, I am the way, the truth, 
and the life. Hebrews 12 verse 2 says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Matthew verse 11 says, Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. What is he saying? He's saying, listen, if you build your life on me, if you in imitate me, then you will be authentic to the design, the specifications, the guidelines that I have intended for you. Anything outside of that means that I'm not displaying authentic character. Now we know that there is a way of the flesh, the old man in Adam, and then there's the way of the spirit, the new man in Christ. And through the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the old reference for life is dead and it's buried. In its place, however, a new person arose, not for us to be better, but to be new. And so when we think about being authentic and thinking about what does it mean for me to be like Christ, it's this, taking up this identity in Christ and living up to that measuring stick. Being new is a person created to be a faithful representation of the original, the prototype, being Christ. Romans 8 verse 29 says, For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many believers. In the message it says the following, God knew what he was doing from the very beginning. He knew who we needed to be. He decided from the outset to shape the lives of those who love him among the same lines as the life of his son. The son stands first in the line of humanity he restored. We see the original and intended shape of our lives there in him. So for you and I to be authentic it means to walk in the scripture. Galatians 2 verse 20 says, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live. I don't have to measure against something else. Now I can measure my life. My character is built on being authentic to this, that Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. See, when discussing what response or action is the most authentic, it's very important for us to first establish, but what do, we, what do we want to be authentic to? There are so many things in this world that wants to make us in, imitate that instead of imitating Christ. And we have to make this decision as artists, as followers of Jesus, as children of God to say, listen, I want to be authentic, not to the old life in the flesh, but I want to be authentic to a new life in Jesus. Now, we obviously want to be authentic to the latter, to this new life in Jesus. And it should come as no surprise that it is often in contrast to what our self-centered, self-serving flesh has been accustomed to doing. Just think about the concept of a center stage. So often when we dance, when we make music, when we perform, we find ourselves in the spotlight, wanting to, to draw this life of the flesh out of us and make it being about that. Instead of saying, listen, no, I want to be somebody that points towards Christ as the original, as the person that I want to imitate, not me. Um, being authentic in terms of this new life in Christ and serving as part of a team also means living without pretense or imitation. I remember growing up, and this was so difficult for me as a musician, always looking around me, trying to see who I want to be like and imitating and being influenced to try and be like somebody else. That will never, ever, ever satisfy you. And it will never fulfill you. And I have come to understand that, that what God has placed in me to be authentic to Him will be the most fulfilled that I will ever be in my life. Now, a very practical uh, example, applicable example of being authentic in terms of the functioning of a creative team, being authentic in a team, is the characteristics of actually being teachable, of uh, uh, being mature in receiving criticism. Uh, many, many years ago, I was part of a team um, and I was the guitar player for a famous worship leader. And I remember we, we had this, this, this discussion about character and about being authentic and not being defensive and taking criticism well. And 
in front of everybody, he looked at me and said, but you are very self-defensive. You can imagine the humility and the, just the, that moment of shame I felt. And my instant reaction, obviously, was saying, no, 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 I am not self-defensive. Now, obviously, that's, that's just stepping right into, that, in, into the trap. Um, and I really had to go do some soul searching. He came and he exposed a blind spot that I had that I did not take criticism well. I didn't want other people to tell me what to do. I thought I knew everything and I was okay the way I was. Some things in our character needs attention and being authentic to who Christ is will actually just put the light on the, those little things that's in my character that says, listen, this is not who I am supposed to be. This is not what, what Christ has put in me to be. It's very important to understand that if you're a part of a team, if you're, part, if you're just, just a follower of Christ, it doesn't mean you have to be perfect. And a lot of people misunderstand that. They think to be authentic means I have to be perfect. Well, that's impossible. It's about being willing to develop. It's being willing to learn. That's what it's, it is about. Secondly, if we think about having good character and how do we measure that, typically you would, you would refer to somebody that has integrity. Now, just this word integrity, people have become so numb to that. And have you ever heard the word integrity being used in a different context to character? Uh, in engineering, the term integrity is used to describe a structure's ability, listen to this, to keep its form while pressure or weight is applied. So if authenticity refers to the correct way to act, then integrity refers to the ability to act in that way, even when external forces are applied. See, it's very easy to be authentic and have good integrity when it's very easy to do those things. When people are looking at you, when you're in the spotlight, it's very easy to say the right things, to do the right things. But when nobody's looking, when it's difficult, when it's unpopular to make the correct choices, then it becomes difficult. And this is what integrity is, to say, listen, when nobody is looking, I'm going to be the same person as if everybody is looking at me. See, integrity is what is required of us as worshippers, is to be authentic on and off stage, to be that same person, to live according to the values of the kingdom of God in any and every setting that life presents. In Ephesians 4, verse 14, it calls us to maturity. It says, so that we may, may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness in deceitful schemes. It calls us to be mature followers of Christ. I'm going to say a little bit about that later on. I think one of the most important characteristics of a follower of Christ and this is very difficult in our modern culture is one of the things that Jesus embodied in his person and that is the, the culture of servanthood and you might have heard lingo between worshipers or between members of your worship team when we refer to uh, when you are going to serve on a Sunday for instance um, even the monthly invite on Planning Center online that we sent out starts with, you've been requested to perform. No, not perform. You've been requested to serve. And so the truth is that deciding to be a part of the worship team, and it, it, you might not have been drawn to the worship team um, by this necessarily, but ultimately your decision to be a part of the team is not a musical decision. It's also not a social decision. It is the answer to the call of servanthood. Knowing that you are here to primarily serve, not just to make music, um, makes all the difference. S sh serving shifts the focus away from my needs and who I am personally versus what the team needs and how I can actually benefit, be a benefit to the whole team. My talent fades away with this mindset of what does the team need right now. Now, on a very practical level, I just want to give an example of this. I remember many years ago, being a teenager in a worship team, very arrogant, self-serving electric guitar player, wanting, every, wanting that everybody has to hear me play. And I remember those moments, my favorite moments in a rehearsal wasn't the moments when we played the song together. It was those moments in between, you know, those little silences in between when the worship leader 
maybe speaks to a vocalist. For me, that was the opportunity for them to hear the scales and the new songs that I had practiced that week. And I would just blare that out, just play it out in front of everybody all the time, thinking that they will be very much blessed by this. After many years, I realized that people are extremely annoyed by that self-serving nature. It's not fun to be around that. And especially now, many years later, being a leader, I despise that in people, in my team, if they have that behavior. And I actually ask them, listen, it's not honoring the people around you if you do that. But I had to make that conscious decision. I remember looking at the faces of people when I would do that and, and thinking, they're not enjoying this. It's not... It's, I'm not honoring them. I'm not serving them. I'm serving myself. And I had to make that decision to say, listen, no, on a very practical level, by serving the team, you, there's, there are many ways to do that. But just by actually honoring the people around me, being quiet in the moments that I'm not called to play music, that's a very easy and pra practical way to actually serve my team. And now, as a leader, I love it when people actually do that, when they honor the rest of the team by just being mature and, and, and having that behavior. The funny thing is though, I'm still tempted to do that. that. The temptation never goes away because we're still human. But now as a mature leader, I know that, listen, that's not called for in this moment. And I'm not serving the team when I do this thing, things like that. See, every one of us has served somebody at some point. Okay, whether it was by making somebody coffee, by helping somebody move to a new house, towing a friend uh, when the car broke down. It required this little thing we call sacrifice. The question you will often be confronted with is, how much am I willing to sacrifice in order to strengthen and to serve this team? See, Jesus' own words in John 3 verse 30 says it so well. He says, he must increase I must decrease. When we talk about all of these things regarding your character, none of this is possible if you don't have wholeness and maturity in your life. And I want to end off with just these two thoughts where I think all of us, we have a past behind us. We have past experiences that have shaped our thinking patterns. Many of us have events in our past that have been so traumatic in nature and if it's not dealt with properly, it can really rob us from living a life with joy and peace that God has intended for us. As many of us have discovered, our own pain has often caused, uh, been caused by somebody else that's near to us maybe. Um, but if it's unresolved, we will never grow in our wholeness, grow in our maturity. And it's no secret that hurt people will actually hurt other people. But... I really believe the opposite to be true, that people who are whole, people who have dealt with that, they will actually be an instrument of God to heal people. This is the essence of what Jesus promised when he says that I've come that you might have life and life in abundance. See John 10 verse 10. See, we want to make sure that every member of our team, of our creative teams, have a reconciled past, um, have moved on beyond that. And we really want to encourage you that being part of a team primarily isn't necessarily just going to solve that. That's something where, when you, where you, when you realize this, there are things in my life that I still need to resolve. There are great places in our campuses where you can go to to have that resolved, to spend time with a counselor, to go for maybe a soul care session. Maybe you need grief shared just, just to work through some of those emotions. We understand that although our lives are constantly evolving and we experience new things every day, um, but we want to make sure that those traumatic events, uh, what we refer to sometimes as our emotional baggage, has been handled effectively before stepping onto a stage um, and ministering to other people. I want to end off our time together with the story uh, where many years ago I had to lead worship at Brooklyn one evening while one of our very close family members was struggling and she was at, her, at the end of a road with her journey with cancer. And literally a minute before I had to walk onto stage leading worship, a worship service, I got the phone call saying that she had passed away. And instantly I had this conflicting emotion of the traumatic events that just took place. And now I have to walk onto stage and lead worship. And this question in my heart saying, but am I going to be fake? Am I not going to be authentic now if I do this? 
And I realized and I experienced the peace of God um, saying to me, that, no, you are being real to what I have called you to be. You have reconciled your past. You are whole. You are mature. And in that instance, it was actually the mature thing to do for me to say, listen, this moment is much bigger than my reality that I'm experiencing now. I want to call you to be authentic to who you are in Christ. To have the integrity to do what you said you're going to do, even in the difficult times. To serve the community around you in your teams by moving beyond your own interest and your own talent. And to give yourself completely to the call of a worshiper by being whole and being mature. Be blessed.